you're listening to The Primal Happiness Show, a podcast dedicated to helping you thrive in this crazy modern world. Every Tuesday, we explore the nature of how our minds really work, what exactly the human animal requires to thrive, and how we can live happier and more fulfilling lives. If you're new here and haven't yet taken our free class, then there's no better place to get a jump start on reclaiming your primal happiness. It's where we'll guide you step-by-step through our antidote to today's modern world. Simply head on over to primalhappiness.co slash antidote to get the free class and discover how to thrive without having to move to a planet that's not so crazy as ours. But now, your host, Leanne brooks Tyler. Hello, my beautiful people. A huge warm welcome back to the show. In today's crazy modern world, men and women are living shallow, disconnected and unfulfilling lives. So we created the path for those who are ready to reclaim their wildness and actualize their deepest gifts. And a wonderful way you can do just that is to join us for our brand new creation, Waking the Wild Heart, that starts this September. This is a journey into the wild, soulful depths of intimacy, love and polarity. And it's for both individuals and couples. This is for you if you are either already in a relationship and are ready to create more juicy, fulfilling and loving intimacy with your partner or you're currently single and are ready to create a relationship of this kind. Together, we will free you from the conditioning that's keeping you closed and awaken you to the wildness of your heart, empowering you to express your desire and passion and enable you to open as love. We can measure the extent we're living fully by how open our hearts are. Living fully is living with an open heart. Are you ready to live fully? We begin on Thursday, the 3rd of September. There will be limited places and they will get snapped up. So if you're feeling this is for you, go and claim your place now at primalhappiness.co slash WTWH. Really hope to see you there if this is calling to you. You'll know, your heart will let you know. This week's show is with Elizabeth Lovius. Elizabeth is a leadership well-being expert and coach who gives leaders headspace to access fresh insight. As a result, they discover the resilience, clarity and creativity to lead collaborative teams through real change. Elizabeth is an author, speaker, well-being commentator, and has 20 plus years of experience, having worked with over 10,000 people. Elizabeth helps leaders access their real wisdom and inner resources to lead in times of real change. Elizabeth can help you discover your personal key that will help you succeed and deliver your intent, cultivate your culture, and lead performance breakthroughs in your business, no matter what is going on around you. Elizabeth believes when leaders think and feel better, they do better and lead better. In this show, we explored Elizabeth's life through the lens of the heroine's journey. How Elizabeth has deepened and transformed as she's lived through that cycle, not once but twice, including latterly through the work she's done with me in both Waking the Wild Feminine and Waking the Wild Sovereign. This is an especially helpful and inspiring show if you're feeling that you're currently stuck at one of those stages of the heron's journey. And you'll understand more about that as we talk about what that is. So you may well be feeling stuck, but not know where you are. Hopefully this show will allow you to have a sense of like, ah, this is where I am now and this is what's ahead. And also, (laughs) this show is going to be really helpful if you've been curious about what can happen when you step foot on this path of waking the wild. You're going to have a whole bunch of questions answered just through listening to Elizabeth's experience. So let's dive in. Hello, Elizabeth. Welcome back to the show. Hello. Lovely to be here, Leanne. Oh, lovely to have you here. And, um, as ever, started talking and then it was just 
<laughs> time was running away with this because there's just always so much to talk about. And the beauty is this show is all about a topic that's so dear to both of our hearts, which is the heroine's journey. And we were just saying both of us feel so deeply that this is a journey that almost is like not only being lived through us, but wants to be spoken through us. And I feel like simultaneously we both had that come come to life in a way like this needs to be out there. Women need to know about this. And the wonderful thing is we have, <laughs> here's what I made earlier, <laughs> a perfect example of said heron's journey in the form of you. So I can't wait to get into that. Our hope is we are really going to bring that journey to life in a way that women listening can kind of see themselves in it, see where they've traveled and see what's to come. Um, and there's a lot there as well. So <laughs> let's see what we managed to get into. But I'm so, so excited to do this with you. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Oh, it's an absolute, <clears throat> excuse me, absolute pleasure to, to do this with you, Leanne, for so many reasons. Um, I think probably it was you who first brought my attention to the idea that there was a heroine's journey, not just a hero's journey, as per Joseph Campbell. And just a glimpse of that, I, I felt the truth of it. And, and I've been around this a few times, two, two times that I'm very clear about this circle. And I, um, I feel like this understanding of it being a journey and a, and a kind of circular journey that you return to is not known for many women. And when I first mm. came across it, it gave me this incredible sense of being in the right place, on the right path, even yes. the dark path, you know? Yes, 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 so yes. It, it mm. all just suddenly made sense. And yeah. which I think often many men feel when they do the hero's journey themselves. And there is an aspect of the heroine's journey that is very like the hero's journey. Yes. You know, so so that's really relatable. So so I just really want to, um, I feel so excited to be able to share this with other women, actually, especially. Mm. And I'm going to start, you know, I've got two circles and I'd really like to skip around the first one because it happened in my youth. And... Uh, and I really can see all the, all the individual elements of the heroine's journey come to life. So I'm just going to skip through that. So my first kind of relationship with the feminine, obviously, is as it is with most of us, is our mother. And my mother was in charge. Mm-hmm. My mother was the second eldest of nine kids. My mother had four children. My mother was bossy <laughs> and <laughs> determined and a can-do and capable and competent. And she showed her love by doing things. Mm. So my mother, the language I would now use was that she was very, uh, came from her masculine. Mm. But I didn't know that, right? I was just a kid who didn't get a lot of cuddles, but got a lot of dresses made for me. You Mm. know, so that was my experience. So that right there, I was taught from a very young age, that was what it was to be a woman because that was my mother. She is an amazing person. But you know, that gave me a feeling of drive and focus and, and I got a job at IBM and, and, I, and I, it was the 80s, I was, you know, big hair, big shoulder pads and I was kind of proving myself and hardening, wearing armour, wearing armour to go into battle. I mean, if that isn't the hero's journey, I don't know what is. Yeah, yeah. I honestly, I just envisioned you there. You must have been just like a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> I would have loved to have met you there. <laughs> I was fearless, literally. I mean, I, I was so imagine that I was young or a female. I met everyone as an equal. Australian men are pretty, um, how do I put it? Sexist. It's how I put it. <laughs> so, you know, um, but I just swiped that away, you know, mm. like, 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 you know, like boyish yeah. people do or, or people in their masculine do. And then I kind of left the comfort and safety of IBM and my family and went traveling. And I think that was the first time I hit real trials and tribulation of disconnection and who am I and loss of identity because I knew how to survive in a masculine world with my armor and my mum's guidance, but I didn't know how to, that was no use to me in the middle of the Irani desert. So I had quite a lot of problems there, but then I came back to the UK, worked at IBM again, and then I started to kind of find my IBM armour again, and I got some help from Landmark Education, and they're an incredible personal development organisation, which is all about the form, producing form, delivering goals. And I got so successful in that world with my armour and my big shoulder pads and my 80s hair 
It was absolutely fantastic until it wasn't. Yeah. Saturn's return, I don't know if people are into that or not, around 29.30, I started to taste the limits of that fruits of achievement Mm. as a woman. Yes. Can I just stop you there? Because I think this is, I'm, I'm guessing... Um, although I know we're going to sort of talk through that cycle twice, I think for many women, what you're describing is that for like many women, I think are going to relate to what you're talking about now, because my sense of it is that's actually the, um, kind of average experience of so many women in our culture. And then they get stuck there. There is because again, so much, I mean, if we look at my work, the whole kind of path, Awake in the Wild, most of this is just out of people's view as something that's even an option, let mm. alone the part of it that's around the Saharan's journey. Mm. And if we don't know it's available, we we think we're the problem. We think, that's well, I'm, I'm obviously broken. I can't fit here and feel happy. What can I do? Well, I'll just try even harder. Yes. I obviously just need to do more. There's obviously something wrong with me because this is this is the model. This seems to work for everyone else. And so I really want to stop there because I think it's a rare woman in our culture that is able to move past that into something deeper and truer and more soulful. Sadly, you know, again, that's really the the reason we're having this conversation because we want to say to women, there is more, there's light ahead on that path. I wrote a post yesterday saying that, you know, that isn't the place to stop. That's the place to keep walking. I could not agree with you more, but I was walking blindly and I didn't know that. Mm, totally. I was just yeah. listening to a deeper knowing, intuitive knowing, which mm. I'm blessed, Leanne, because I've always had that voice that says, j- j- don't worry about what everyone else is doing, just do what's right for you. Yeah. And, and I have got that aspect in me. Well, and you're the sage, aren't you? So, yeah, hey. Like, <laughs> yeah. And, and I was successful in this world of achievement and performance but it, it was dust in my mouth. It didn't feel good. I knew there was something else. And I couldn't, I did all the things you just said. It was all me, something wrong with me. But because I'm a bit of a maverick and bold and willing to go on this, what I call the skinny branches of life and risk them breaking to get the good view, um, I went away from that world of performance into literally the opposite world. And I did it in a way with one eye, eyebrow raised. And I'm sure you've had your own experience of this as well, which was like, we'll see, you know. I mean, it's, it all looks very woo-woo, but I will. And you, would you believe it, Leanne? I trained as a past life healer. I went the exact <laughs> opposite. <laughs> what I can see now is that was on the tin because I was kind of interested in that at the time. But really what was inside the tin was a circle of women coming from a profound respect for the divine feminine and goddess energy. Mm. That's what I really didn't know what I was getting when I opened the yes. tent. Yeah. But the outside box made me buy it because I thought, mm. well, that's interesting. People have past lives. Well, I can do that to my friends, you know. <laughs> um, but, but actually, I did dissented and initiated. That would be my first initiation to the understanding of the goddess energy. And I will never forget the certification process because I absolutely had a tantrum because they didn't follow. Like they gave everybody four marks. (laughs) But some people (laughs) didn't get the answers right and I did. (laughs) I was like... (laughs) That's so you. (laughs) That's the weird it's ugly head for a minute. I mean, not that it's ugly, but, you know, in this case it was not appropriate and and Mm -hmm. couldn't see beyond that there was energetically something else also true that that Mm -hmm. was being acknowledged by these women, you know. So that was a little moment. And then I I really was interested in spirit guides and I was drawn to feminine uh, kind of for a long time And then I saw that my mother was human at some point in this journey Mm. and something fell off me about me and my mum and we became friends. And then around the same time, I decided to invest in me. So there's a relationship there. There was something I was fighting against that I stopped fighting and then I started to be 
see myself as valid of giving. So I gave one year to myself, lived alone and travelled and decided to make myself happy because at the time I was obsessed with finding a partner. I was 35. And then one, and then in this space of allowing myself to be vulnerable, allowing myself to be follow my heart, allowing myself to really listen to what was wanting to happen to me but not know, I met my husband. Mm. Do you know I had this insight the other day, Leanne, you'll find this funny. I met him straight after all my clothes were stolen. I was vulnerable. I was needing help and support. I was not Elizabeth in charge, knowing her shit. I was needing some man to save me mm. <laughs> or someone. Mm. And I, I don't want to say that in a horrible way. I, I, I mean, that, I, that was my reality. I was in a foreign country. I needed support and help. And in that space, in that little moment of Elizabeth's life, when she was open, the man appeared, the, literally the man, the love of my life appeared in that space. Isn't that interesting? It's really um, bringing to mind the myth in uh, this book. Give me a second. Um, I can't remember if I've uh, read this in a uh, Wake and Wild Feminine that you've done or not, but it's really brought this to mind, the lindworm. Um, and do you remember that one? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, to, to, spoiler alert, I'm going to have to tell the end of the story. <laughs> <laughs> but in there, there's a, so it's actually one of my favorite myths, but um, there's this idea of this horrible monster. And then there's the uh, girl that he's kind of, I think, is his, by this point, his third bride or fourth bride because he's eaten all the others. And she has the wisdom of her dead mother who's spoken through her and told her what to do. And she takes off a layer of layer of her, and she, she's told to wear something like seven nighties, some night dresses. And she takes layer off after layer off, and each time he has to take a layer of his skin off to the point where she's having to like scrub him to get the last layer. And then there's, there's this kind of uh, wet mush on the bedroom floor, and then wakes up the next morning as this beautiful prince. And um, I just love that kind of divesting of those layers of which you could say is your masculine shell. Yeah. And then yes. there you were, that kind of mush on the floor. I just love that. Yes. It really brought that. Um, I love the way, like, it, within, I mean, the heroine's journey itself is mythical, but the way it kind of myths are, like, interwoven into each stage two. Uh, like, I see that over and over again. So love that. Carry on, Elizabeth. Oh, my God. So then I met my husband. And do you know what? It, 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 really, he, he healed the wounded masculine because I had a new relationship with masculine energy mm. after that with him. But he also healed, I want to say, oh, he loved me in a way that healed my unlovability. Mm. I, and I can't even put that into words, but that was a healing. Mm on a deep and profound spiritual, psychological, sexual, every level you can imagine, he held me and there was, and saw me and there was something in that that was deeply and profoundly healing. Mm. And then I got pregnant and had two babies. And for me, my motherhood period of 18 years or so, you know, looks like an integration of the femininity of motherhood and then the providership of the masculine. Mm. So, you know, I bumped along kind of for a while and that felt good. And now we're into round two, right? <laughs> so fast forward, menopause. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you know that book, what, get, what Got You Here Won't Get You There? Mm. Anybody that's listening who's kind of 45 plus, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. What got you here will not get you there. Mm. And this is when the next cycle kicked in. I, you are not in charge of, any more than you're in charge of your menstrual cycle, you're not in charge of the menopause arriving in your life. It is, mm. you, you surrender to it. Quick, so the sooner you do, the better. Don't try and suppress it. It is littered with gifts, but it will 
it will shed you of what no longer serves you. Yeah. You like can I just off. can I just um jump in there? There's two things I think are really worth illuminating here. I'm gonna make an assumption and feel free to clear it this up if I've um misunderstood your experience. My sense of it is whilst, and I think you alluded to this, whilst you were uh, going through motherhood, because you also took on like the role of bringing in, you know, breadwinner, bringing in money, you'd, again, as you alluded to, you'd kind of gone back around this kind of like hero's journey side of the kind of the right hand side of the circle again, which was kind of working for you. You know, you were again, building up this idea of like, it's an external journey, building up these external successes in the world. Yes. Yes. And so I think, again, that's really worth saying, like, it's not that this isn't available. It's not that this isn't um, valuable, but there is a point again where one way or another, there is, we kind of come face to face with its limitations. Yes. And sometimes that's through um, a loss. Sometimes that's through a kind of one of those just spontaneous things that happens to us. And then sometimes, and I think for many women, at least one of those cycles round is the menopause. And I think this, again, this is why it's really helpful to illuminate this is through the lens of our culture of making wrong anything really to do with a woman's body and to do with cycles because we want everything to be linear and to make sense and to keep the same. Anything that's cyclical is cyclical is clearly a deviation from that, which then looks wrong. It's like, we are supposed to be going this direction and you're veering off and being all hormonal and sensitive. How can that work? This isn't going to work in this culture. And so from that lens, a woman can't help but want to make what's happening wrong, want to um, numb it out, make it easier, not be able to be fully in it because she's been told by a culture, no, this is wrong. You need to get back to where you were. And so I think, again, this is a point where we are given this invitation by the dark goddess, like come down, come down. It's time to let go. It's time to descend. And through the lens of our culture, we will not see that. We will not see the invitation it is. We'll be trying to look away and get back on track. And so this is so important to illuminate those that point where we start to get, and uh, women seem to go through these, like it really, what seems to me, I don't know, because I've obviously, I'm only aware of this lifetime I've had, but I get the impression that that perimo- perimenopausal phase seems to last much longer these days than I believe it did. And I think it's because women are so feeling the pain of these lives that are so out of sync with who we really are. It's like that menopause is trying to say like, listen, feel what you're, you know, you're getting more and more sensitive for a reason. You're getting anxious for a reason. You're getting irritated for a reason. Listen, listen, listen. And again, because we lack this context, we don't hear and keep pushing back. So again, I think this is so beautiful that that was that call for you. Like it's, you're going down, girl. Going down. Yeah. So I, you know, I traveled the the masculine kind of providing, achieving, having everything I've ever wanted in my life. Uh, I don't want to dismiss that because obviously that's funded my life and, and it's been a joy and I've been privileged to do the work I do, which is working with leaders and helping people come home to themselves. But I knew there was something missing. And interestingly, it was in the work at, at first. And I started to doubt and question myself, which I think I would call is that start, that beginning of the call. Mm. And I wasn't looking for it, but I then ended up having a spiritual epiphany through something that pointed me in the direction of who we really are as as energy, as at at source, and how we can um, experience ourselves in all sorts of different ways, you know, we can experience ourselves as good one minute, bad the next, you know, mother one minute, you know, worker the next. Who are we? (laughs) Who are we? The big spiritual question. Who are we? Why are we here? And I and I came across an understanding that that gave me quite a lot of clarity in that direction and peace Mm. and ease. 
and joy and flow. And then my body would have some other thought ideas, <laughs> right? My body would be sick or be really tired or I would have a bad, like I'd have a grumpy mood. Um, and I was like, what? What is this? What's going on? So the, all the things you just pointed to, the the kind of the, the pushing away of of certain experiences, I, I was in that. And then I started to notice something. I started to notice, and I, I really think I have to go credit. Uh, so I've been following Leanne's stuff now, and Leanne and I seem to just keep finding each other and having little chats about things. And, you know, we just have this natural affinity and I'm following her work and I'm interested in it and we're kind of friends. We become Facebook friends. Um, and then I noticed that I'm really drawn to, to women who are spiritual teachers of some kind, but they're not teaching anything in the form. They're saying things like, all is welcome. Be where you are. Give this body rest. There was no edges to them. There was nothing trying to get me from somewhere to see something. It was none of that kind of putting in the light. It was almost like when I was a kid, when I was would find dens to go and hide in, it was almost like they were creating metaphorical dens for me to go and hide in. Mm. And I was feeling like I would lie, I would spend a day lying on what do they call the things on the ground, beanbags, with blankets, doing nothing. And I would feel amazing at the end of it. And I'd go, what mm. the fuck's going on? Excuse me, sorry, to be cut that out. What is going on here? What is going on here? Um, and I started to recognise the theme. It was something around the feminine energies. And then Leanne's kind of talking about the feminine energies and she's starting to see things clearer in that direction. She's having her own breakthroughs and insights into the divine feminine. And so one day I send Leanne an email and I go, if you ever want to do a wild, wild woman circle, I'm in. And she's like, oh my God, I was just thinking about that today. Okay then, let's do one. Oh you my remember? goodness. I can, Yes, it's so funny. It's, as you've said it then, I always remembered you suggesting it and I just realised like the reason it hit me so deeply is I was having a bath in the morning and had that idea of, I wonder if I were to create something was this kind of journey for women to come together and explore this idea of feminine reclamation. I wonder if people would be into that. And then you, it was like you'd read my mind and emailed me. Yeah, so that's that's why I always forgot the bit that I had the thought first. I always thought it was you just suggested it, but no, you're no, completely no, no. right. It, yeah, it, it matched yeah. exactly. Mm. But you hadn't articulated it to anyone. Yes. No, I hadn't said it to anyone. anyone. <laughs> and yes. I came in and said exactly yeah. the same and you went, okay, right, this is now going to happen. Yeah. But we've had that many times over the course of our work together, mm. really a lot. And I know we're deeply connected and partners in this journey. Um, and then you were a very important partner in my journey. So I want to start bringing that in. But I, we did Waking the Wild Feminine. Mm -hmm. So you were both the catalyst for the first one and a member of the first one. I was, and I was. It was a joy. It was an absolute joy. And I basically was a bit bossy. And I said, "Yeah, at the end of it, we're not done. We need another round." And everybody, <laughs> said, yeah, that, we're not done. We need another round. <laughs> and then we were done, you know. Mm. And then we were done. But it was very beautifully done. And I would never have thought just being held in circle by women who didn't give you feedback very often. And, and listening to myths and just saying what came up, it, that's the form of it. But that does not do justice. I'm sure you do other things too and, and practices and inquiries and all of that. But it's not in the form. Mm. There is something absolutely sacred about being met in that yearning. Oh, I'm going to cry now. To connect with our feminine essence as a woman. I, it is impossible to explain the holding that is available in that space and the healing and the non-doing. I really want to say the non-doing mm. through being witnessed and honoured. Um, so that became a, very, a source of nourishment and I think education in this journey, in this journey, in this 
heroine's journey. And then I did this couple of circles with Leanne and then I also did Waking the Wild Sovereign. Let's just, um, sorry Sorry. to, uh, this is gorgeous, but I really want to pause at this point to illuminate where we are again to this uh, on the heron's journey because I'll make sure I link to this in the show notes because again, I think it's so, so beautiful to be able to bring something that's kind of on the page and make sense, like bring it to life. Like what does this really look like? What does this really feel like? And the bit that, Elizabeth is um, talking about here is described in the Heron's journey as an urgent yearning to reconnect with the feminine. And you can hear, you know, just in the language you use there, Elizabeth, like it is that it's literally a yearning, this kind of almost like a thirst, like how do I quake this? And again, in our culture, how do we, how do we? And uh, that's what I notice over and over again. You know, when I, put out offerings like Wake the Wake in the Wild Feminine, I don't say very much about what that's really going to be like. I talk very little about kind of the form it's going to take because I know that for the women that are feeling that, even if they're not able to put language to it, that they're feeling that yearning, they will know that's what will meet it. Mm. And I've got to the point now where I trust that so much. I you know, I just know, I hardly need to say anything. Like each time it's just feeling itself because I know this isn't, this isn't about me. This isn't about this moment in time. This is an archetypal pattern of energy that women are going to cycle through and they have over and over and over again. And those women who are at that point in the circle, that cycle, they will hear that and they will be drawn to what's going to meet that need. And so I think, again, they're so worth just pausing and say, like, that's what's there. And if, if you're feeling that, if a woman's listening is feeling that, like, oh, my goodness, like, again, you are not broken. This is just beautiful and perfect. And listen to that. You know, whether mm. that's working with me or finding another way to meet that need, like, please mm. honor it. Like, this is just the, Oh, as I'm sure you're hearing our uh, in what we're talking about here, that this I think is one of the most beautiful parts of the heroine's journey. Like it for me, I think was the it's the bit I think I'm most appreciative of. Like I really feel like ah oh, of of all of it, that's the bit that I kind of like feel so. Oh my goodness, that was so profound. Thank. You know, I'm just so fortunate that I had that experience. Um, and I also know not all women do because of, again, everything we've talked about. It's just not available. It's not spoken about. Women kind of get stuck at a stage and think they're the wrong ones. Like, no, this is available. It's for us. It's for us. I think it, a circle of women or, or a particular kind of feminine energy, it, it touches things only that can touch. That's why yes. we're so... We, we consider it so profound and sacred, I think, Leanne, because there is nowhere else you can receive that as a woman. No. And I know it's, I've been in many circles over the years and they all have that quality of being um, held where all of you is welcome. And I mm. do not think, Leanne, that that is what women are told the rest of the time. All of yes, you. yes, 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 yes. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad you brought that in. Mm-hmm. Yes. So again, that the ways we can reconnect the to the feminine can come in so many forms. And, you know, as we were just alluding to as part of Wake the Wild Feminine, I will offer practices that really help us like get into our body to reclaim that relationship to cycles, you know, our own cycles, the cycles in the natural world. Um, but I don't think there is anything that replaces the power of circle. And um, I was just sharing this actually on a webinar I did last week where I was talking about the next Wake the Wild Feminine, which is happening in November. I'm planning to make some changes to introduce some aspects I really felt were being called for me from the last one, like more teaching, more coaching, longer, deeper. And the thing I will not change is the fact it is all built around a circle. Because I cannot, I could like, you know, with all the different things I can offer women, I can't replace the just absolute magic that is created by women sitting together, knowing no matter what, whatever feelings are coming up, no matter what they want to express, no matter what happened to them in the past, no matter what they're craving now in this moment, it's welcome. 
Absolutely. And I would say just to talk about now our work together in this time, um, this was about reclamation of uh, I want to say what I'm meant to do. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I thought I knew what I was meant to do and I was doing it in lots of active, organised ways. And then w- working with Leanne, there was a lot more room for all is welcome, so therefore feelings. There was, you know, a good third of the calls there would be tears or not wanting to come to the call and, you know, all sorts of things like that. Because Hating me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leanne's such an ogre. No, because I hadn't allowed myself that those feelings and so the container of the work with Leanne was this safe place to go to have the feeling and go beyond and I would say to anybody listening one of the main gifts of that time of that part of the journey was the reclamation of the I want to say sacredness of feelings of Mm. honoring of allowing of uh trusting all of which are available through the body mm-hmm. and and you can access them in different ways but you know the body is a very reliable access uh, to the portal of feelings and that and then in that time really seeing the value of yeah allowing myself to go where I hadn't gone before um, mm. but not in a heavy way because not in a confrontational masculine way, but in a, just a very kind of gentle, calm way, but also a relentless pursuit of when you connect with that, what, what is that, where is that taking you? You know, like an honouring, I've said that. Mm. I just want to say one thing that was really funny at this time, which you will remember, is I went on retreat to be with myself at this time in Samahita. And I I walked around and there were all these wonderful women, yoga teachers and artists, creative coaches and all sorts. And I was literally, I mean, I I want to say literally allergic to any male energy that came anywhere near me. Like I didn't Mm. want their hands (laughs) on me in a massage. I didn't want them teaching me yoga. I didn't want them even looking at me and giving me their point of view. I was so in that descent Mm. and that yearning. I just didn't want masculine. And then at the very end, the universe had other ideas and I ended up with a male yoga teacher who pushed me and I realised the perfection of the push. Mm. I realised I was ready now to integrate the two. I'd, I'd given my allowing space and he pushed me to kind of improve my yoga practice and I realised that, that that was actually, I needed that. But he saw me, he saw that I needed that with and he didn't ask my he did ask my permission but he didn't make me mm. but his seeing had me step up yeah so mm-hmm. I'm kind of coming to the end so shall I keep going or would you like to um add something here yeah I'd like to um pause here briefly because it's funny actually this uh it's keep bringing to mind so much has been on my mind this week and today I wrote a post that was answering a question I often get asked which was something like do you work with men too? And the reason people ask that is because I constantly talk about women. And um, and I was talking about w- why that is the case and the fact, yes, I do work with men in this way. And um, the reason I'm bringing this up is I think we can assume when people are, are focusing a lot on women, a lot on the heron's journey, a lot on the feminine, it's from a place of kind of disavowing or making wrong men and the masculine. And as you know, Elizabeth, but people who are listening may not know, like that really couldn't be further from the truth. Um, both in my heart and also just kind of built into the fabric of all of the work Jonathan and I do is coming from this absolute honoring and love for both the divine masculine and the divine feminine and the union of the two. Mm. And there are points where being able to illuminate them as separate energies and allow those reclamations to happen with a sense like this is sacred 
in its own right. Like this mm. needs to be seen for the like, oh my goodness, the potency it has in its mm. own right in order to be able to say from, okay, if I'm going to choose to embody the fullness of the feminine, I'm then available to receive the fullness of the masculine. Um, and so I think what you're talking about here is just so worth stopping to illuminate. Like nothing we're saying is at all saying anything at all negative about the masculine. It's really talking about the way that in our culture, so much has been pushed in shadow. So much has been um, disavowed, diminished, uh, demonized. And all of this is about bringing it into the light. Um, so we can actually have sovereign choice. We can have discernment about what we want to embody, what we want to express, how these energies can be integrated. And whilst really anything that's happening, I see as kind of happening in this, uh, funny enough, I was talking to a client about this earlier. It's a combination of it's happening for us, as in anything that happens is material for our liberation. So it's happening for us, but it's also happening as us because we are the ultimate creators. Mm -hmm. And it's from that place, something that's happened that seems to be external, i.e. in the form of your yoga teacher, it's like, how is this happening for me? How is this happening mm -hmm. as a, a kind of creation of Elizabeth, for Elizabeth to be in relationship to? And how mm. is, why is that happening? How can that be received as material for, for your liberation? Um, mm. So such a perfect example. I mean, in that, I remember we probably spent an entire session almost looking at that mm -hmm. dynamic that happened the, energetically, the way that he provided you with that like level of seeing mm -hmm. and provision and you had that resistance and then you submitted, then you received. And mm -hmm. what you really took from it was so, again, I often talk about this kind of when we bring the two together, some, another mm -hmm. thing's created, a third thing's mm -hmm. created, which I know was you, you actually took on uh, a, a yoga practice from that. Mm -hmm. And so I just love that as an example. I mean, we'll get lots and lots of examples come up like that, but even just one seemingly mm -hmm. simple fleeting experience like that can be used as such powerful material for our mm -hmm. liberation. Um, so I love you sharing that, Elizabeth, and thank you for giving me a chance to just, you know, again, illuminate the masculine yeah. is so important as part of this heron's journey. Well, as you know, uh, maybe obviously anyone listening won't know, but I'm, I have always been a massive advocate of good men. I have two sons and a good man I'm married to. And, you know, I, I work a lot with executives and I see the goodness and I'm not a fan of the idea of that toxic masculinity is all that men are. I think that's really uh, d doing them a disservice. I think many men are a victim of a patriarchal world as much as women are. You know, it, it, it's not serving anybody and it's not anybody doing it. It's just we've all got over-focused on one aspect and we just need to correct the balance. It's personally what I'm about in my work. Um, but I really want to just kind of finish the second circle with um, a word that you used which I don't think I even knew I, uh, there was a block in me. And I want to use the, the word that is one of the words most recognised as a divine feminine attribute. And it is, and I do directly credit our work together on me seeing more about this. It is the capacity to receive. Mm. So that's right at the heart of what the feminine energy um, brings to life. And I did not know until I got to that part that there was anything in the way of me receiving. And I've even got some post-its right in front of me. What is, what is beyond deserving? Uh, where are you willing to be seen? What's in the way of receiving? So these, <laughs> so these are things we've explored and I've written to, to keep my awareness on. And, I, and then I started to do the final, well, it's not final forever, but final in the, in the terms of this journey. Um, I saw, so remember I said I healed my relationship with my mom. Well, what I hadn't done is healed her in me. Mm. You know, the legacy of the conditioning and the, 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 the mum in me, the, yes. the unhealed feminine in me. I hadn't, or she was actually masculine energy, but that part wasn't, given, brought into the light. 
And then after I brought that into the light, I was walking, it was right in the middle of the COVID time, rel- relatively recently, minding my own business, going for one of my walks in the street. And out of the blue, I feel my dead father's presence. Out of the blue. I don't do that very often. I do feel presences, but not him so often. And I would have said I was neutral about my dad. I love my dad, but, you know, he didn't give me many issues, but, he, you know, he wasn't a big fe- feature either. And then out of the blue, Ho'oponopono arrives in my consciousness. And Ho'oponopono, for those of you that don't know, is a, a, a healing and forgiveness process from Hawaiian sages. And it basically is you, you bring someone into your mind, into your heart, and, you, you know, I love you. I'm sorry. I forgive you. Do you forgive me? And thank you. And thank you. And thank you. So something like that. And I just brought those questions to mind one by one. Mm. You know, what do I thank him for? What do I love him for? What does, and, and when I got to what do I need to forgive him for, I didn't know. Everything else was kind of familiar territory. But when I had to forgive him for something, I didn't know. And then I wasn't asking, well, I was asking, but this wasn't me. This came to me. Mm-hmm. I think that little Elizabeth did not think that she was seen by her father, which is one of the most important qualities of the masculine is to see yeah. the feminine. And I did not know until that moment that I hadn't been seen by my dad. And the minute it was in my awareness, obviously I could forgive it, brought it into light. And I swear to God, every minute since then, something has fundamentally left the building. Oh, my God, Leanne, you don't even know this. Any kind of should or have to or push in me has gone. Or when it shows up, it's very palpably different. It's just mm. disappeared and dissolved. And my willingness, you'll love this, Leanne, this language, but it's just how it looks to me now, is my willingness to receive the, you know, what the universe wants to give me, I'm fully, I'm, I'm prostrate on the floor with my arms wide open, willing to, it to happen, including, you know, when there's little shit storms, which there was this week, somebody you know, decided to leave and it wasn't like um, ideal, but I noticed I, my receptivity to it was high, my willingness mm-hmm. to allow. And so what looks what looked hard before to me in terms of pushing myself and having discipline in certain areas, discipline has arrived where discipline needs to be. I call that an integration of healthy masculine in in using this Mm. language. And body, ease, joy, presence, rest, replenishment, giving to this, also happening. Mm. So there's this sense of feeling, I don't want to say this is the end of the line, but there's at this point in the journey, there's a satisfaction in a reclamation. And who knew? that I didn't think my father saw me. And the minute I forgave that, a whole pile of beliefs and limiting thought just disappeared. Mm, Oh my goodness. I love this so much. There's a few things that I would love to touch into on this. So uh, firstly, um, I believe the point you're at here with the Heron's journey is the, um, the healing the wounded masculine. And just to say these these stages, the author herself um, says they don't always, Maury Murdoch does, says they don't always happen exactly in this order. Sometimes there's a little bit of overlap crossover. And I believe the part that you're talking about here, Elizabeth, is the healing the wounded masculine. And this very much is that part of us that can very much act as like a bit of a slave driver and, you know, you should be doing it like this and do more, do faster, do better. And it's almost like, I feel like it's an echo of, you know, if we look across the circle, it's like back to that point where we were living a very masculine life. It almost like it comes back around for us to again, look at and heal, integrate. And um, so I love that. And it's, it's so beautiful, isn't it? How, again, these things don't have to be like directly dealt at, like what we think is the source. Often the source is so much deeper and 
you could look at that kind of like, oh, well, I, I will try and let go of that belief that I should do something when actually letting, like, again, bringing that wounded part of you into light allows that to happen. So I love, mm-hmm. love, love that. I just feel that, um, and it may be this actually doesn't relate, but I remember just before we started recording, you you mentioned when we first started working together and what you said you wanted to get out of it. You mentioned earlier, like I was saying, oh, this feels like what I want to work on. Does that feel like a good point to share this? Because it feels like it's somehow related to me, but I might be wrong. Yeah. So, so, so one of the things when you work with uh, any coach, but, but with Leanne, it's very much about, well, what, what is it? What's your vision? You know, what, what, is, what is this coaching? What do you want in your life? And so I did quite a lot of work on thinking that through. And at the time, a lot of my life looked like problematic because I didn't have discipline. And, and that was the problem. So I needed to kind of take supplements on a regular basis and exercise in a particular way and file my paperwork. And, you know, I, these were like, and, and the end kind of went, oh, okay, you know, like really this powerful woman wants to be able to file her paperwork and take a couple <laughs> um, She could see that it was problematic for me, but she didn't bother. She, you know, she was kind of like, um, well, that would be signs of something. I can see that, but what else, you know? So we kind of enriched the vision and we, we, we expanded it out and we, we played with it. But what I see now, so so I'm now taking supplements and doing yoga and filing my paperwork, or I found a man who can. And um, (laughs) turns out it's my husband who knew. (laughs) They're all along. (laughs) It does now. (laughs) That's another story, isn't it, Leanne? Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I realised that how much push was in my life, and I was already pushed out. Oh my goodness, yes. I was sugared out. mm, I was pushed out. I was living in so many aspects of my life on the should train of what a good person would do. I had, without knowing it, that I didn't know that my masculine had gone out of control Mm. until there was space to rest again. Mm. And then in the space to rest, which is kind of the, the work with Leanne, permission, permission, and then and then cho- choosing, in the space to rest, you know, resting isn't always easy. Sometimes the shit you haven't been dealing with comes up, right? So resting mm. is a is a is a profound and important piece of the journey. But but when resting has done its work and replenishment has done its work, if you pay close attention, you'll discover what really wants to happen. And that doesn't have push in it. And I would say that's where I am now because I've somehow healed whatever was creating the push. I mean, I I, joke, I didn't joke. I kind of postulated with Leanne that maybe I've been trying to prove something to my dad all along without even knowing it. You know, I, I, that doesn't feel like real to me, but it's a likely story. Yeah. It, yeah. it might be so deeply embedded in a young girl's DNA that she doesn't even have it as a conscious thought, you know, mm. but it's still running the show. And the only way you get there, Leanne, as you well know, is you have to cut through the intellect. You cannot, the intellect will never take you there. You mm. have to go into the body. You have to go into the soul, what I call the soul wisdom. You've got to go beyond the linear analysis and you've got to see it yourself. It can't be given to you. Other people may point. But you and you've got to be willing to receive that Definitely. wisdom. Mm. Yeah, I just had um, something else come to mind, which I think uh, illustrates a couple of things really beautifully. Um, and then I've had no idea how we're doing for time, but I think we're probably due to close. So uh, yeah. I'll share this, and then I'd love to know what you would like to say in completion. Um, so yeah, for a lot of the time of our co- uh, coaching. I think you were still being driven by this underlying should that we were kind of slowly um, taking layers off of and having places where you could fall back, could allow yourself to be held, could allow yourself to receive. Um, But there definitely was still that story. And I always remember you, um, as part of Wake the World Sovereign, we we give our clients sessions with both myself and Jonathan. So typically if it's a woman, most of her sessions would be me and and kind of one in four will be with Jonathan. And 
I always remember where you had the session with Jonathan. And I think you were like, right, okay, he's going to represent the masculine. He's going to like help me bring more discipline and structure and containers. And I always remember um, what came out of it is him saying, Elizabeth, just get discipline with rest. Just there. Just discipline with the rest. Discipline with taking rest. And um, I really remember that st- standing out. And it almost like you needed, I think, to hear it from him. Like right. that will count. That counts as discipline. You've got it like this rubber stamped yeah. thing from the masculine. Yeah. That counts. And that's important. And that's where to start. Which I think, again, there's so much just in that, that I think so beautiful and talks to so many elements that we've been looking at here. But that was so important for you to recognize. Like if I'm going to should on anything, it's allowing myself to rest. Absolutely. And I, do you know what? The COVID gift, talk about life happening for you. <laughs> Leanne, I have not picked up a suitcase in four months. You know how mm. I'm, how that was not like that. The other thing, just just to mention, which I really is a huge thing, but I directly attribute to the work with Leanne, is I moved countries because I allowed (laughs) myself to recognise how tired I was working in two countries and living a life that was not, was was I doing because I was a good parent for my kids and my husband and I'd forgotten me in it and it was slowly, slowly working less and less and then it became clear and it was actually my husband who said, we need to move and we need to move for you. And Mm. we moved. And ever since then, I have, first three months was hell. But after that, I've been, I've never been happier. I've never felt more rested. Yeah. So, and then what's happening? I'm dropping things. I'm not having to prove anything to anyone. I'm listening better to my body. I'm in life. I saw spring, spring for the first time ever in front of my very eyes. And I'm, I'm, you know, I feel integrated. I want to say, I, I feel in alignment, you know, with, with all of it. So Mm -hmm. um, it's been a fantastic journey for me. It's not over, but it's also been, um, I don't, I don't even know how to find the words to have your partnership. Um, You couldn't ask for a better fellow traveler on the journey. Oh, Honestly, so my pleasure, Elizabeth. It really has been um, a soul journey for both of us. Absolutely. Um, I always say uh, your best clients are teaching you as much as you're teaching them or showing you as much as you're showing that you at uh, them. <laughs> and um, yeah, this has been, you know, really has been the unmaking and making of me too. So, you know, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And thank you so much for coming on and so generously sharing your story like this um as we've been talking I always know when it's going to be a beautiful episode where as I'm recording I'm thinking I can't wait for people to hear this like I want this in people's ears and I've thought that multiple times during this show I feel like this is such a gift from like both of our hearts to other women out there like this is for you this is for you everything is waiting for you Thanks, Leanne. Thank you. (laughs) So much love. Mm, Oh my goodness. I loved Elizabeth's generosity in sharing her story so fully and so honestly. Here's what stood out to me. As Elizabeth's story showed, simply being aware of a heron's journey and where you've traveled, where you are now, and what's to come can be so helpful, inspiring, hopeful without even needing to take action straight away. Just knowing that it exists and where you are on its own can make such a difference. It's really important to understand that there's absolutely nothing wrong with you if you're feeling the struggle of being a woman in a masculine world that's been set up to honour the hero's journey. Quite the opposite. And now we have such a beautiful opportunity as women to hear the call of the feminine and to embrace the heron's journey to fall deeply into our bodies, our souls and who we came here to be.
If you'd like to get the notes and links for everything we spoke about this week, including a link to the um, image, the article, the book that we kept referencing, The Heroine's Journey, hop on over to the show notes and they're at primalhappiness.co slash episode 290. And as I mentioned at the start of the show, enrollment is now open for Waking the Wild Heart, the first of its kind. We are so excited about this. We begin on Thursday, the 3rd of September. There will be limited spaces. They'll get snapped up. So do go and claim your place now if your heart is feeling called to this. The link for that is primalhappiness.co slash WTWH. If you don't want to miss out next week's episode, and I'd really suggest you don't, we have some amazing episodes to come, head on over to Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, or your Android or iOS app of choice. Hit subscribe. You'll get each episode straight to advice as soon as it's released. Thank you so much for listening. You've been wonderful. Catch you again next Tuesday.